Come on up. Hey, boys and girls. Looks like you might have something to tell us tonight, do you? Come on up. Can I give you a hand? Looks like you've had a long, long life, it's been a long a journey. a long time, yes. Thank you. Okay, well, I'm going to let you tell the boys and girls something then. Huh. Shalom. 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 That's how we used to say hello back when I was alive. And I saw the manger here in the stable, and it made me think of my story. You see, it was my manger, my stable, because I'm the innkeeper. Who knows what an inn is? What's an inn? It's like a hotel, but you don't stay as long. That's right. It's like a, a hotel or a motel. And in my town, which was Bethlehem, there was only one inn. Mine. Well, me and Hannah, Hannah was my wife, and we operated the inn in Bethlehem. It wasn't much of a business, though, because Bethlehem's real small, and even though it was famous, it was the city of David, not many people ever came there, and so business was slow. And then, business got really good. Well, it was because Caesar, the Roman Empire, Emperor, said that everybody had to go back to the city where they were born and register to be taxed. Now, I didn't like Caesar. I don't like to say I liked anything he did, but it was good for my business because they came from everywhere back to Bethlehem and there was only one place to stay. Where do you think that was? Yeah, yeah my inn. And so me and Hannah, we were really busy every night that the inn was full. Our inn wasn't very big, just a few rooms, but they'd all be full every night. In fact, we'd even rent our bedroom. It was a good chance to make money, and so we'd lay blankets out on the floor, and they were sleeping everywhere. One night after we'd finally fed them all, it was stew, lamb stew, we put them all to bed, and then me and Hannah, we were, uh, we didn't have a bedroom, so we were going to go out to our stable and just sleep in the hay. That sounds like fun, doesn't it? <laughs> well, we were almost ready to go out, and I heard a knock at the door. Did you knock on the floor? Yeah. And I said to Hannah, I wonder who that is. It's awfully late. Nobody would be traveling this late. It's not safe. It's not safe. I threw the door open, and at first I didn't even see her. She was behind him, and he was this big, big guy. And, and I said, what do you want? He said, we need a room. I laughed at him. A room? We're full. We don't have room for a mouse, let alone a big guy like you. And I started to slam the door in his face. And then I saw her, this young woman, almost a girl. And she stepped out around him, kind of leaning on him. She had a real sweet face. But I could see that she was pregnant. And she looked like she was going to have a baby any minute. Just then, my wife, Hannah, she came up behind me. And she said, innkeeper, what's going on? And she looked past me and, and saw the couple there. And, she kind of pushed me aside and went out and put her arm around the, the young lady and she said, oh, my dear, you look like you're pregnant and you look like you're going to have a baby anytime. And then Hannah said, innkeeper. When she said my name like that, I knew I better listen. She said, innkeeper, do something. What was I supposed to do? And the whole inn was full. These people all paid and was I supposed to wake them up and say, get out, get somebody else? No. And I didn't know who they were. I mean, I didn't know who the baby was. But Hannah said, innkeeper, get some blankets, eat some water, get some of that stew, bring it out to the stable. That's where all of our guests' animals were, you know, out in the stable. 
But I usually do what Hannah says when she has that tone of voice. And so she took him out to the stable and I got the blankets and some water and the stew and came out there and Joseph helped me and we put up a little makeshift fence, you know, to keep the animals away from where Mary was. And we kind of hung a sheet up there to give her some privacy. Well, my Hannah helped her have the baby. I was so proud of Hannah. You'd think she was a, a doctor, you know, helping her have that baby that night. And Joseph and I, we just kind of stayed back and then talked and listened. And, and I said, Joseph, how come you came to Bethlehem? And he said, we had to because the baby had to be born here, like the prophet said. I didn't know what he meant. But then I said, Joseph, what are you going to name the baby? And I thought he'd say, Joseph, like me. But he didn't. He said his name is going to be Jesus. Jesus. Jesus means God saves. And Joseph said his name is going to be Jesus because He's going to save his people from their sins. And I thought, hello, baby. <laughs> you don't look like you'd save anybody, let alone save everybody from their sins. But I didn't have much time to say anything because just then the baby was born and we heard him cry out. And Joseph and I hurried around the blanket to see the little guy. And Mary had laid him on a blanket that we put in the in the feeding trough. That's what a manger is, you know? That's where the animals stick their heads and eat the hay. But that's how we put the blanket there so the slobber and stuff wouldn't be there. And there was baby Jesus. And I didn't have much time to think because just then, they arrived. The shepherds, that noisy, wild bunch of men, running in the door saying, where's the baby? Where's the baby? Well, I didn't know how they knew there was a baby here. And it's not like babies are born in my stable every night, you know. And as they came in, they said, the angel said, we'd find him in a manger. And I said, the angel? And they said, yeah, the angels. There were thousands of them up in the sky. I couldn't even count them. And they said, don't be afraid, because we bring you good tidings of great joy for all the people who are born to you this day in the city of David to save Christ the Lord. And then the shepherds, they got down on their knees and they bowed to baby Jesus like he was the king or God. And Joseph said, I think you better go because baby needs to rest. And so they gave Joseph two lambs as a gift for the baby. Next day, we helped Mary and Joseph get a room in town. My cousin had an extra bedroom and they stayed there. I still don't know what to think. Not long after that, the other people came. The wise men. You're going to learn about them Sunday, aren't they? The wise men are like, well, almost like kings. And they came in a caravan with camels and servants and fancy clothes. And they came to the inn. Where else would you go to stay? It was the only place. And they said, we've come to see the king. We followed his star, and sure enough, I looked up, and there it was, right over Bethlehem. I'd never seen it before. It's the brightest star you can imagine. Next day, it was gone. We never saw it again. And I said, I know where he is, and I took him there to the house. And those wise men, those magi, just like the shepherds, they got down, and they bowed to the little boy, and then they brought out their presents. I've never seen anything like it. Gold is the king. And frankincense smelled good, like his life was so sweet. And myrrh, I didn't understand the myrrh. Myrrh is kind of something like half. I didn't know that the baby had to die for our sins when he got old and then rise from the dead. And then they left. And a couple of nights later, Mary and Joseph left in the middle of the night with a baby. Found out they went to Africa, Egypt, to get away from King Herod, who wanted to kill the baby. And then we didn't hear anything about him. We lost him. And we wondered where he was. 
10 years, 20 years, 30 years later, we saw him. He was a man, and he worked miracles. He walked on water. He made blind people see and deaf people hear. He took a little boy's lunch and fed 5,000 people. He even raised people from the dead. And he taught us about his father. He said we're to love God and love each other. And do to others what we'd want them to do to us. And then he died for our sins so we could be forgiven. And he rose from the dead, went back to heaven. And you know what? He's coming back sometime. King Jesus coming back to earth. And then we'll all get to bow down in front of him and worship him and love him. But he sent his Holy Spirit to be with us. So you can talk to Jesus anytime, wherever you are. And he'll listen. He'll help you. Because he loves you. He loves you so much. And that's, that's my story. That's my story of when baby Jesus was born. Thanks for listening so well. Thanks, Miss Hill. Is it hard if I kind of stay and listen? Thank you.